was talking to a woman uh, just during this week who is a Catholic, Roman Catholic. And she says, no, I don't go to the Catholic church anymore. I go to a local, I think it's a Pentecostal church. And it makes me much happier to go to a local Pentecostal or evangelical church, one of those. But I don't go to the Catholic church anymore. It doesn't make me very happy. And I think to myself, well, if our Catholic church is not making you happy, something is seriously wrong somewhere. And yet you can go to a, an evangelical church or a Pentecostal church and you're much, much happier. And it transpires that part of the reason she doesn't come to the Catholic church is because she can't cope with all the regulations, rules, dogmas, doctrines, all these heavy things that are laid upon us. The rules, the routines, the, the uh, rubrics, the regulations that are thrust upon us. And as if we've got to keep those if we've got to, to get to God, to get to heaven, and that sort of thing. And she said, I, that's not her, that's not her. She wanted a kind of freedom. She wanted a freedom. And you know, so many people will not come to church these days. Will not come. Young people especially. They can't face the rules, regulations, heavy-handed dogmas and doctrines that are thrust upon us, especially as children. Especially as children. And they really are, they can grind, if we're not careful, they grind us down. And that is not life-giving. That is not healthy. And there are smart people in the church, very smart people with big brains, who think they know it. And they can quote church doctrines left, right, and center. Or they can quote Bible quotes left, right, and center. And you know, if you listen carefully to them, what they say is very, very hollow. There's no substance to what they're saying really whatsoever. Because actually, they don't know. And that's why they've got to keep quoting doctrines and dogmas and Bibles and everything else. Because they don't know. They don't come from any personal depth of experience. And what upsets me more than anything is that these people get listened to because they sound so authoritative. And yet there's really very little there at all. People with big brains in our churches, people with big brains who are, who are ordained sometimes, or those who know the Bible so well, or know church dogmas and doctrines so well, I want to grind us down, because they, they say you've got to honor and obey these doctrines and these dogmas. Well, is it any wonder so many people are walking away from our Catholic religion, our Catholic church? They cannot face this kind of thing any longer. And I think COVID as well has probably done its thing too. And then I listened to St. Paul in that lovely first reading from Acts saying very simply, very simple, I don't want to sad saddle you with unnecessary burdens that will unsettle you. I don't want to saddle you with unnecessary burdens that will uh, unsettle you. That's what Paul is saying in the first reading. Because what, what was being given to them was all these heavy-handed doctrines of Judaism of the day. And Paul is saying basically, keep it simple. Keep it simple. And let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit wants to do through you. That is the point. Have you ever been in a position where you've been talking to someone and you kind of, you're not sure what to say? And suddenly you say something, and you think, that sounded impressive, that sounded good. And it's probably the Holy Spirit speaking through, because in that moment of time, there was a humility in ourselves, where we just didn't know, we didn't know. And we come out with something that sounded, from what, what, where, where we are, sounded quite clever in us, but we didn't even know we were saying it. That is the Holy Spirit speaking through us, because of those moments of humility where we say, I don't know. I really don't know the answer to this. And that's the mark, really, of healthy religion. Healthy religion is always, an, always knows that it knows some things and it doesn't know others. It doesn't say, we know it all. Once you say, we know it all, you're moving into a kind of extremism. Well, I'm certain I'm right and they're wrong. 
extremist Catholics are very, very dangerous. Just as extremist, extremist religion anywhere is dangerous. Anyone who's that certain, they know they've got all the truth, is a dangerous, dangerous person. And someone who thinks they, just because they can quote this one, that one, and the other, a dangerous, dangerous person. Please, don't, don't hang around too long with them because they could, they could trap our minds if we're not careful. So the whole, what I'm trying to say simply is this, be aware that sometimes we don't know and it's okay not to know. What we cannot do is say something like, well, when I was a child, Sister Mary Therese, when I was at school, taught us X, Y, Z, therefore it must be right, because she was lovely. Well, she may well have been lovely, Sister Mary Therese, but she can still be wrong. She could still be wrong. Mummy, Daddy, when I was a child, taught me that. Mummy and Daddy were lovely, but they can still be wrong and be taught themselves wrongly too, as seems to be in the case very often in our churches. I'm not talking just the Catholic Church. The Anglican Church can be just as dodgy as well in this way if, if we're not careful. If our religion is to be healthy and life-giving and happy, it's got, to be, it's got to know collectively that we often simply don't know. And be humble about what we don't know. Don't be smart about what we think we do know. Because we, we know the Bible that well, or we know the church teachings that well. It really helps no one. It helps no one except those people who want certainty. And of course, the reality is, there is no such thing as certainty. Why would Jesus, here's a question for you, why in the name of heaven and earth would Jesus give us his Holy Spirit and say, let the Holy Spirit speak through you, if we could be that certain? Why would Jesus do it? It doesn't make sense. Let the Holy Spirit speak through you, especially in those times where we're not sure, we're not certain, we simply don't know. Because we have the humility to say, I don't know. It shouldn't, be a, it shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't be something that makes us look f foolish. But simply, I don't know. But I can read up on it. And I can deepen my sense of experience. I can deepen my sense of knowledge a bit more about this, if there's more to be deepened about. But sometimes in our faith and our religion, we have to be a people who can say, all I know, a bit like Socrates, all I know is that I don't know. All I know is that I don't know. There are many more things that we don't know than we do know, especially when it comes to our faith, when it comes to our church teachings uh, and our spiritual lives and all that kind of thing. I'm not talking about our work. I'm not talking about the, the politics of the day. I'm talking about our faith, our spiritual lives. Be aware there is a lot we don't know. That's why Jesus gave us his Holy Spirit. And he's saying to us, open yourselves in humility in humility to the power of the Spirit. And the Spirit will work these things through you. Especially at those times, we're humble enough to say, I don't know. Very quickly, I remember a woman saying to me years ago, years ago, she said to me, what's become of limbo? <laughs> what's become of limbo? She said to me. And I said to her, well, I think our understandings have gone this way, this way, this way, about limbo. And it was, all, it was all done in a bit of fun, she was asking me, but, and suddenly she turned very aggressive against me. And she just thumped her foot on the floor, and she said, Sister Magdalene, Sister Magdalene, Magdalene taught me when I was a girl, limbo is X, Y, Z. How dare you say limbo is anything different? Suddenly there was no room for any more chat about this. There was no deepening of knowledge, of experience in this woman. Because Sister Magdalene had taught her, and that was it. Closed discussion. It's no good. These, these certainties don't help us. I'm sure Sister Magdalene, Sister Magdalene was a lovely woman, but she seems to have got it wrong, and she was taught wrongly. Not her fault. She can't be blamed, necessarily. But people are taught wrongly, and they pass wrong information on. We cannot be that certain. That's why Jesus gives us his Holy Spirit so we can say the right things, hopefully at the right time, in the right place. And sometimes we look at ourselves and say, my goodness, did I say that? That sounded pretty impressive. Didn't realize I'd said that. Or someone else congratulates us. 
in saying the right thing at the right time. Because in that moment of time, there was a humility in us, as I say, and the Holy Spirit was able to speak through us. So I just put that out there to yourselves. Are there moments in your lives as well where there is a humility? You can say in all honesty, I don't know. It's not a case of looking foolish or looking silly. I don't know. But I can't always quote the Holy Scriptures. I can't quote church dogmas and doctrines and so on. I simply don't know. But the Holy Spirit can speak through me. And in that moment of humility, maybe something very impressive, something wonderful comes out. Leave ourselves sometimes in that humility where we can say, I don't know. And let the Lord's Holy Spirit sometimes speak through us. Honestly, we'd even surprise ourselves.